This is how to connect the spreadsheet to a calendar and specifically we're going to be creating events from data in the spreadsheet. So here's the spreadsheet I already have set up and I provided several pieces of information. I have a client, a location, a date, and a time on which each of these appointments is going to occur. What I want to have happen is have this data populated into my calendar. And if I push that forward to January of 2022, there is nothing here yet. But I want to write this script that is going to take all of this data and create, in this case, I'm going to specify 30 minute blocks, but I want to create 30 minute blocks of these appointments throughout January 2022 as specified by the date and time here. Let's go look at the script, see what we want to do. So first things first, let's give this a more meaningful title, create calendar events. Excellent. Now, obviously we're going to need the spreadsheet. So const sh equals spreadsheet app dot get active. I also need the entire calendar app. So just like here, spreadsheet app dot get active is getting the entire spreadsheet container. I need the calendar container const cal equals calendar app. And I actually created a specific calendar just for this. So I want to get calendars by name. The name I'm using here is Sheets Tutorials. Usually you'll just have one calendar, so you can literally do dot get default calendar. I have several, so I want to make sure I'm using the right one for this. But normally you can just do get default. I'm going to call it by name. And since this is doing get calendars by name, because you can't have multiple of the same name, that's going to return an array. Let me show that. So see here, it's actually inside of an array with the square brackets around it. So I need that individual calendar, not the array of calendars. So I'm just going to bound that by zero or say get the first element in that array. And now it's just returning that calendar. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now I need the sheet we're working on. Dot get active sheet. And then I want all this data. There's a couple ways to do this. We could call ss.getRange and specify a particular range. Um, or we could do ss.getDataRange since as it is, there's no data except for this. The only challenge is the way I want to write the for loop. I don't want to include this header row. So I do want to specify a particular range. I want it to start at row two, whereas if I did get data range, it would start at row one. Column one, number of rows, ss.getLastRow, and number of columns, we have four columns, dot get values. Great. Now, the various things I need for the calendar event that I'm going to create. I need the client name, I need the location, the date, and the time, and I'm actually also going to need an end time, which I'm going to create based on these. So I don't need to get those from the sheet, those will be generated within the script. But what I want is a way to instantiate those or create those once and then um, fill those or instantiate those multiple times. So we're first going to declare all of those. Let client, location, date one, date two, and a time. That's everything I'm going to need throughout the for loop. Now, for let i in, oh, we never called this anything. Let's call this let data. For let i in data. Now here's where I want to loop through everything and populate these. So client 
equals data, no, don't need the bracket yet, data i0. That's the first thing. Location equals data i1. D1 equals new date. Date. I promise I can spell. <laughs> and that's going to be from i2. And time is going to be new date as well. Data i three. That's everything that we get from the sheet. And the way that JavaScript works with dates and times, we do need to declare time as a date in order for this to work. Because what we're going to do is set the time of the date equal to the time of this, or we want to set the time of D1 as the time values of t. Let, let me show you what I'm talking about there. So let's just log d1 and log t. So the first one of each of these is d1, the second one is the time. So here it's getting January 18th, which is correct at two in the morning because of my time zone. Then the second one is getting the time, which is setting it as December 30th, 1899, but it's getting the correct time. It's giving 1700 or 3 p.m. Same thing, just 24 hour versus 12 hour and the JavaScript is playing it as 24 hour. So it's gonna do that back and forth. So here's January 18th, Again, that's correct, at two in the morning, and then December 30th. So the date here is correct, the time here is correct, the date here is correct, the time here is correct. See how that's bouncing back and forth? So I want to set the time of D1 equal to the time of T. D1.setHours is the correct function to use here. T.getHours. So the way that the set hours works, the parameters is the hours number. And then I'm allowed to set a minute number and a second number and a millisecond number. So it just runs through each of them. Set hours lets me set the hours and the minutes and the seconds and the milliseconds. I'm just gonna care about the, the hours and the minutes. Now let's try again. So now we should have three outputs at every loop. And let me make that more clear. Loop. All right, so here at the beginning, we have January 18th at two in the morning, correct date, incorrect time, December 30th, 1700, incorrect date, correct time, then it does d1.setHours. Now I have correct date and correct time. And it's gonna do that all the way through. Great, so now I have the correct start time. Start date and start time. Let's go look at what cal.createEvent. CreateEvent wants a string title, great. A start time as a date, Great, I have that, and an end time as a date. So I actually need to create an entire date object in order to return the correct, or in order to pass the correct end time into this function, into this create event. And for the purposes here, I'm just saying that the appointments are all 30 minutes long. You could go ahead and add something here that says how long is this appointment or is it an all day or something like that. For simplicity here, we're just saying everything is all day, but that could be simply changed if needed. In order to do that, I'm going to instantiate this D2 and I'm going to do that as D2 equals new date and that date is going to be D1 get time. 
And I'm just going to have to ask you to trust me on this because the way JavaScript works with dates is a little bit non-intuitive. So I'm going to do get time plus 30 minutes times 60,000. That's, I believe that's 60,000 milliseconds times 30 to get me the number of milliseconds in 30 minutes. And I'm going to add that to the current time of D1. And remember the order of operations is going to do this multiplication before it does this addition. Great. Let's log that. Not D1, D2. All right, so now starting here at the top, here's my correct date, wrong time, correct, uh, incorrect date, correct time, corrected. And then here is the new D1, January 18th, 1700, and D2, 30 minutes later. Perfect. For the second one, D1, it's going to start at 1330. It's going to end at 1400. Perfect. Starts at 2130, ends at 2200. Perfect. So that is working correctly. Now we just need to actually create the event. Cal dot create event. The title, I'm going to call it meeting with plus client. Plus in a string is going to concatenate them. Start time is D1, end time is D2. Perfect. Now I'm missing one thing. I do want to have the location here. For the location, that needs to be in an option. So here we can see there are two versions of create event. The second one has the options. That's what I want to be using. And the options it shows us how to use is by using the squiggly brackets inside. So I'm going to do create event. Same thing here, but then I'm going to add my squirrely brackets, location, and do LOC. Let's get rid of that first one. So that should do it. We're getting the spreadsheet, we're getting the calendar, we're getting the active sheet. We're getting all the data that we need. We are creating the various variables that we're going to use throughout the loop. In the loop, we're setting client as the first column, location as the second column, D1 as a date object of the third column, T time as a date object, that's important, of the fourth column. We are setting the time of D1 as the time of T, getting that time out. D2 is defined as 30 minutes after D1 for an end time. And again, kind of just have to trust me here, get time is how we do this, and 60,000 milliseconds times the number of minutes we want. Then we create the event following the correct, or we use the create event formula following the correct syntax. So let's run it through. Loops through everything. No failures. Check the calendar. Look at that. All right, let's make sure this is correct. On the 18th, meeting with Rouge Clovis at Crystal Moon Restaurant. Ah, it's giving this one at 1130 because it's doing the order correctly. 11.30.12. At 3, meeting with Mina Monteri at Toshi Station. Correct. What's the first one? Should be Ramus Antilles at the Moss Espa Market on the 3rd at 7.30. Meeting with Ramus Antilles at 7.30 at the Moss Espa Market. There we have it.